Hi guys, today we are going to be doing a grocery haul video. I'm about to head out to Woolworths to do my shopping and I will take you along with me and then when I get home I will show you exactly what I've got and what I'm planning to make with it all. So I'll see you at the grocery store. So I was looking at the health food aisle and I saw that this organic jackfruit was on sale so I decided to pick that up. I've never tried it before but we'll see how it goes. And then I also got some almond butter and oh my gosh I was so excited when I found these raspberries because I have been looking for raspberries for like a week and they haven't been in stock anywhere but I got some. So I'm going to take you through exactly what I bought and what I'm intending to use it for. So firstly, we have these organic raspberries. I eat these in my porridge. I also make some of my jam with this. And yeah, that's probably all I'm gonna use that for. Then I have two blocks, oops, <laughs> two blocks of firm tofu. I love this for curries, for stir fries, um, or poke bowls. Basically, it's very versatile and I love this tofu. This is my favorite plain one, which is the macro firm tofu. So I got two blocks of those. I'm probably gonna make a spinach curry tonight or tomorrow night. Um, so that's why I've got a lot of spinach as well. So I'm gonna make a spinach curry with some tofu. It's like a vegan palak paneer. It's so good, I might film that one. It's so delicious. So good, I might film that one. So good, I might film that one. This broadcast has been interrupted to show you how to make this delicious vegan pollock paneer. Alright, so now back to my regular voice. After you have preheated your oven to about 200 degrees Celsius, we are going to prep our tofu. So the tofu in this dish is a replacement of paneer in the traditional dish, which is a cheese. And the tofu actually works really well, especially when you bake it slightly, so it gets a slightly firmer texture. It's delicious. So anyway, what I'm doing here is just patting the tofu dry. So it comes in like a brine kind of liquid and you want to drain all of that out and just make sure it's quite dry. Some people use a tofu press, which is when you press it really firmly down, but the tofu I buy is really firm anyway, so you don't really need to do that. You just need to pat it dry. And then you just want to cut up your tofu into these kind of rectangular baton shapes. If you've ever had an Indian curry with paneer in it before, we're basically trying to mimic the shape and the texture of that paneer. And if you don't know what paneer is, it is a type of cheese that they use often in vegetarian style Indian dishes. And now we are getting out a baking tray and then lining that with some baking paper. And then I like to cook my tofu with some curry powder. So I don't really measure this, but you know, just put some curry powder down spread it out and then just go ahead and place all of your blocks of tofu on top of it. So you can see here I put some more curry powder on top and then also some salt. And now we are going to put it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes depending on how crispy you like your tofu. All right, so if you're not magic like me, you're gonna have to chop up your onion manually. This might take a minute or two and you might cry, but it will be well worth it because onions are amazing and they make curry taste so good. So I just put a little drizzle of oil in and then I put my onions into the hot pan. So you just wanna saute them for a couple of minutes and then we are going to be adding in some garlic. So I went for the easy option and used some pre-minced garlic. 
um, but you can definitely use fresh garlic cloves. I added in about three heaped teaspoons of that minced garlic. So I would say that was about five to six cloves of garlic. It's quite a lot of garlic because I am making a double batch of this dish. Then you just wanna stir that all around and keep that cooking for a couple of minutes. So here I'm adding in some curry powder. I added in about three teaspoons of curry powder here, as well as some garam masala. This is an amazing spice. If you don't have this in your cupboard already, I highly recommend you go out and buy some garam masala because it makes any Indian curry taste 20 billion times better. So anyway, I put in one heaped teaspoon there, but I did add more later. So I will let you know in the description box below exactly what all the ingredients were because I added a few extra spices as I went. So as you can see in here, I just added some extra turmeric and paprika. It was just a little bit, but again, I will put the full recipe in the description box below so you can check that out after you've watched this video. So here I'm adding in some freshly grated ginger. This is completely optional, but I think it tastes amazing. And if you don't have fresh ginger, you can always use ground ginger, which is super easy to buy at the supermarket. Um, but yeah, just adding in some ginger. All right, so now it's time to add in the diced tomatoes. I used a big 800 gram can of tomatoes here because I'm doing a big batch of this curry. Um, but you could also use fresh tomatoes if you have that available to you. All right, so after your delicious mix of onion and spices and tomato has been cooking for a while, you wanna add in the spinach. So I added in about half of the spinach first and let that wilt down. And then I also added in some stock. It was just about just over half a cup of stock to help it all kind of wilt down and make a bit more of a sauce. And it's gonna take a while to mix up because there's so much spinach and you need to wilt it all down. So you just have to keep adding in more spinach, wilting it down. Um, the spinach reduces in size, like it shrinks so, 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 so much. I think there's actually a meme about how much spinach shrinks. I'll try to find that. I just wanna let you guys know that you can actually also use frozen spinach. The first couple of times I made this recipe, I used frozen spinach and it tastes just as delicious. Um, and it's also a bit cheaper to get frozen instead of fresh. And obviously it lasts a lot longer. So it's a great option if you want to do that. So after a while, it will have all wilted. And then what we are going to do now to make the creamy curry is transfer all of this into a blender. So I've tried this with a food processor and a blender and the blender works way better. I don't really know why, it just does. So I highly recommend using a blender. Just make sure that your blender can actually have hot stuff in it. If it can't have hot stuff in it, you'll have to chill that mixture before you put it in your blender. But my blender was fine, so I put the hot mixture straight into the blender. And as you can see, it turns into this beautiful green curry sauce. This is actually a great way to eat spinach if you're not a big fan of spinach because honestly, you don't taste the spinach. Like, I mean, I like spinach anyway, but it really does not taste like spinach. The main flavor is the curry flavor and then you taste the, the tofu, which also has curry flavor in it. So basically just tastes like a delicious curry and you barely even taste the spinach. Anyway, enough of my ranting. Now we are adding in the coconut cream. Doesn't that look delicious? So I've got, I think it's a 200 ml carton of coconut cream and I use that whole carton and then I use a slight bit more from another carton for the topping right at the end, but you could just use one 200 ml carton. The coconut cream, like you really need the cream in this. You could use coconut milk to make it like less calories or whatever, but the cream makes this just taste so creamy and delicious. And in the traditional Indian curry, they would use real cream. So if you use milk, well, it's just not gonna be as deliciously yummy. And actually, if you look at the macros, which I will put down below, this actually isn't too high a calorie of a curry anyway. Like when you add rice to this, it'll be what, like 550, 600 calories all up for a really decently portioned meal. So I recommend going with the cream if you can find some. 
So the next ingredient is tamari. So you could use soy sauce, but I just have tamari here, so that's what I'm using. And it is two tablespoons of tamari. So that just adds a kind of depth, I guess, of flavor to this curry, which is really yummy. And yeah, you just stir that in. Okay, so now our tofu is ready. You want to take that out of the oven carefully, wearing mitts. You don't want to burn yourself. We've all been there. And this is what your tofu should look like. Yummy, slightly crispy and lightly golden brown. So now it's time to add the tofu to your curry. Just chuck it all in and stir it all up. So at this point, I decided to give it a taste test, which I highly recommend when you get to this point, give it a taste and see what you think it needs. So I realized it needed a whole lot more spice. So I added in some more curry powder, some more paprika, some more allspice, as well as some salt and pepper. I also added in some maple syrup to give it a slight sweetness that I thought it needed. So I will put all of the exact measurements of the spices that I used in the description box below but I do recommend that you give it your own taste because obviously everyone's taste buds are different. Some people like a lot more spice than others. So maybe you want to add more paprika. You could even add in some chili if you like it spicy. So yeah, give it a taste, see what you think. Um, play around with it. If you add a bit too much spice, well, I guess you could just add in some more coconut milk or whatever. So I highly recommend you give this a go and put your own twist in it. Add something new, take something out do your own thing. So I just served mine up with some fresh parsley because I actually couldn't find any coriander in my fridge. I would usually use coriander, but you can top it with anything you like or nothing at all. And yeah, serve it up and enjoy. Um, but yeah, so I also got spinach and some lettuce. So I like this kind of lettuce mix because it's got cabbage and carrot in there. So when I can't be bothered cutting up carrot and cabbage, I just use it like this. Um, what else do I have? I have some carrots because I love making carrot cake, carrot cake porridge. Um, I love just having carrots in my salad, so I have a bag of those. And I have four capsicums because I'm thinking of making stuffed capsicums. So I'm gonna stuff them with the lentils, which I bought over here. It's my favorite brand of canned lentils. It's um, the Annalisa organic lentils. Um, so I'm thinking of stuffing them with the lentils and then also these chopped tomatoes and then either some rice or quinoa and some other herbs and spices, which will be delicious. Then I have two large sweet potatoes. Um, I'm going to use one of these to make my sweet potato brownies, which I'll put a link up here. I love them so much. But then the other one I might just use for a lunch or for some poke bowls or for, I don't know, just to eat on its own. <laughs> So good. And then I have a brown onion, probably use that in the capsicum dish thing. Then I have bananas. I eat probably half a banana to a banana every day. Um, they're just a great snack. And also I put them in the porridge, so bananas. Um, an avocado, because I like having avocado on toast occasionally. And then I got a cucumber, because I love cucumber in salads. Um, I also got some apples um, just because they're also a good snack and I'm thinking of cooking up my carrot cake muffins which use an apple in them so I've got some of those. And then this one I showed you in the store. I just got this because I saw it. I've never bought it before. I have no idea what it tastes like but you know I thought why not try out something. It was on sale. We'll see how that goes. Then I got some Lindt 70 percent dark chocolate. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, I use this in my sweet potato brownie recipe as well as in other cooking and then sometimes I just eat it, but mostly for cooking, so I got that. Got some sultanas, these are again for the carrot cake muffin recipe, but also sometimes I like to have them in my porridge in the morning. Um, then I have some cocoa. This is my favorite brand of cocoa because it's just really rich and it doesn't taste bitter. Sometimes I've bought cocoa in the past and it was really bitter. So this one is delicious. Um, it's a Cadbury brand. You can just get it near yeah, Woolies, which is where I went. But I use this also in my sweet potato brownies. So I got some more of that. Oh, and there's also almond butter. Um, I use this exact almond butter in my sweet potato brownie recipe because it's nice and thin 
and um, it just goes really well on the sweet potato brownies and then yeah sometimes I use it on porridge as well but this one is so good so yeah that's all I bought today I hope you enjoy this video it's just a super quick and easy haul that I got from Woolworths I have a couple of protein sources with the lentils and the tofu and then I have some veggies fruits some treats I guess you would say and something a bit odd that I just decided to pick up I'll probably use this on a pizza or in tacos or yeah, I probably use it on a pizza or in tacos. I like to make homemade pizza with like a pita bread base and then this and some bacon cheese and maybe pineapple would be really good. But we'll see. That is all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really supports me and I really appreciate it. As well as hitting the like button down below and the bell notification button if you want to be notified when I post a new video. At the moment, I'm posting every Wednesday and Sunday, so keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.